Uh, welcome back. We continue uh, some more discussion on unbounded operators. So, first I will again discuss a couple of examples and then uh, we will develop some more uh, operator theory. Okay. So, so, last time we saw an example of uh, operator in uh, little l 2. So, that is a discrete case. So, now I discuss uh, the continuous analogs of that example. Okay. Now, so this is example Okay. Now, the space we are working is right, write that. So, this is C 0 R n. Okay. So, this is the, so let me describe that space, the space of all continuous functions. <coughs> defined on R n continuous functions uh, either real valued or complex valued. So, that uh, I will not repeat that. So, <coughs> defined on R n So, which are small at infinity. Uh, small at infinity. Okay. So, let me <coughs> uh, explain that what is that small at infinity. So, if f belongs to x, uh, then for each epsilon, so this is part of the definition that smallness. So, f is continuous of course, that is that is fine. For each epsilon positive, there is there exists a compact set compact k in R n such that mod f x is less than epsilon for all x outside k. Okay, so, that is the definition of small at infinity equivalently. So, you can check that equivalently uh, for each epsilon positive the set uh, of all x in R n such that mod f x is bigger than or equal to epsilon is compact. Okay, so, that is the <coughs> uh, definition of a continuous function being small at infinity. So, then <coughs> you can check that certainly uh, f in x is bounded. So, we can x then x with sup norm becomes a Banach space. So, you write down and verify yourself that it uh, sup norm defines a norm and then it is also complete. Okay. So, in this way 
you will recall all your knowledge in uh, functional analysis especially the operator theory. In fact, if this is an interesting exercise. In fact, uh, <coughs> if f belongs to x then f is uniformly continuous. and of course bounded so that that's how this soup norm okay so on this space now we are going to define uh, one multiplier operator uh, multiplier operators are important they naturally arise uh, in the following context so differential operators uh, get converted into multiplier operators via Fourier transform. So, these multiplier operators are uh, quite important. Okay. Now, define A by, so this is a linear operator. So, A f is equal to m f. So, f is in x. Okay. So, again let me write that. So, this is the space C 0 R m, where m is just a continuous function. So, as such this function m f the <coughs> multiplication of these two functions need not be in x. Okay. So, that naturally uh, <coughs> restricts the domain the definition of A. So, with domain let me call it d A. So, this is set of all f in x such that m f is also in x. Okay. So, here is the proposition. So, I will not, uh, so this is again a good exercise for you. Okay. So, that so a is a linear densely defined closed operator in X. Okay, and second part, so we are interested in the uh, spectrum and resolve one set. So, once we know one of them, so the other is uh, immediately known. So, the spectrum sigma of A is the closure of the image of A. Okay. So, this image of A are not image of A. So, sorry that function image of m. Uh, let me okay. image of m is image of image or range whatever terminology you use range of the function m. Yeah. So, if it is a real valued function then it is the subset of r otherwise it is subset of the uh, 
the complex plane okay, C. Okay. Uh, so, let me just quickly, so this linearity and this closeness are straightforward because we are uh, using the soup norm in x. So, let me just say why this is uh, densely defined. So, in fact, you can show. So, let me write as okay, if you consider smooth functions or just even continuous functions with compact support. Okay, so, certainly uh, this is part of d a and also dense. Okay, so, this is dense, dense in uh, so, densely defined means the d a has to be dense in the space okay, and C infinity C is dense in x. So, this is again a simple exercise. So, work out all these things. Okay. So, you are also <coughs> reviewing your knowledge in functional analysis and even in real analysis. Okay. And of course, this needs more work, but you can just work out. Okay. So, so in particular if uh, m is bounded, you see that a is bounded. Okay. So, this let me just say that a is bounded if and only if m is bounded. So, one more example, but now in L p. Okay, so, one more example. So, now this time I take L p r n. So, r n of course, you can replace by any open set, but again the range of p is important. So, that infinity even in the previous <coughs> first part of this course we saw that p equal to infinity needs to be handled separately okay, because of uh, non separability of l, l infinity. Okay. And now I take, so let q be any measurable function finite almost everywhere. Okay. And again you define A f equal to q f and since we are assuming q only a measurable function, this q f may not be in x. So, that uh, makes us to consider this domain. So, this is domain f uh, in x such that q f is uh, also in x. Okay. So, again the same property. So, let me just quickly say that. So, A is uh, a linear densely defined closed operator. So, in order to prove closed ness of this operator. Now, you need to use uh, the di uh, convergence theorems from the Lebesgue integration theory. 
ok. And now, so just, uh, so let me just sigma of A, see in the previous case that is continuous case. So, this operator, so let me just recall that, ok. So, it was closure of the image of the multiplier function, ok. And now, this q is only a measurable function. So, as such it is defined almost everywhere and we cannot really talk of its image. Okay. So, but there is a notion uh, called the essential range of such a function. So, let me just write that. So, I will explain what that is. So, this is essential range of Okay, so, again that third one I just, uh, so this A is bounded if and only if Q is L infinity. Okay, so, let me exp So, again I want to just see how you get this quickly and what is this essential range of q okay those two terminologies those two things i just want to discuss okay so how do you see the uh, density of okay so that's quickly uh, why uh, da is dense in x. So, we cannot just take uh, continuous functions with compact support because q is again an arbitrary measurable function. Uh, so, that need not be bounded at all, okay. but since it is finite almost everywhere, we can uh, see this why the d a is dense. So, put E n set of all x in R n or if you are considering any open set you just take that one q x is less than I quote here okay. and then your R n uh, no, let me not use <laughs> n here. So, let me just do n. Okay. Okay. So, E k that is your better choice and uh, R n is union now this E k. So, if f is in x, so that is in L p, put f k is f into this characteristic function. Okay. And that belongs to, because now q is bounded on E k, so this belongs to d a. Okay and f k converges to f in x. Okay. So, that is how you prove that. So, that implies d a is dense in x. Okay. So, that is the one explanation and now we define what is the essential range of q.
Okay, so this let me first define that. So this is a set of all lambda in C such that uh, this major of this set. So let me write that E lambda e epsilon is positive for all epsilon positive. So, where this E lambda epsilon in the set of all x in R n such that q x minus lambda is less than epsilon. Okay, that is the set and that major this major is just Lebesgue measure uh, has to be positive for all epsilon uh, positive. Okay. It may look strange, but immediately you observe that if q is continuous So, work out all these exercises or gaps, then q essential, the essential range of q is simply coincides with the previous one. Okay. So, this is always closed, closed in C. Okay. So, for discontinuous functions, we do see uh, a different thing. So, let me just uh, so for q, okay, so you define q of x equal to 1 for all x not 0 and q 0 is 0. Okay. So, this is we say that is one almost everywhere. right? So, here the q essential is simply 1. So, 0 is not counted. So, essentially it is just 1 okay. and if you take q heavy side function in again uh, in n equal to 1. So, this is 1 for x positive and 0 for x negative then check this q essential is the closed interval 0 1. Okay. It is not just 0 and 1. Okay. So, the for discontinuous functions uh, one need to be careful about that essential range. Okay. So, with two examples now we just continue our discussion on uh, <coughs> unbounded operators. So, one of the important notions we need to understand is about adjoint of an operator. Okay. So, edge so in the bounded case this is very easy to define and understand adjoint of an operator, but now we are dealing with unbounded operators. So, it is important to describe the domain of that operator. So, it is always uh, <coughs> that operator comes with the domain of definition. Okay. So, though this can be described uh, in general Banach spaces, but let me just uh, restrict this uh, discussion to Hilbert spaces. So, now we are working with 
Hilbert space and our applications are only in Hilbert spaces. But it is possible to use uh, define this in a general Banach space, but then for that you require uh, the dual space and then uh, etcetera. Okay. So, Hilbert space H. Okay. So, let A again let me write that D A in H into H linear. A is called a symmetric operator if A x. So, this is the inner product in H. Okay, so, this is x A y for all x y in D. Okay, so, remember both this x and y are in D A, then only this relation makes sense. So, in case of bounded operators, this is equivalent to self adjointness, but we see so, so far we are not defined what is the adjoint. Uh, there are in unbounded case, there are symmetric operators which are not self adjoint. So, that calls for uh, uh, discussion when a symmetric operator uh, becomes a self adjoint operator. Okay. So, this <coughs> so now I describe the adjoint. So, let me go to another page. Okay. So, adjoint. So, let y in H be fixed for the time being okay, and consider the functional the functional x going to a e x y. Okay. So, this is from d a and in general c. Okay. Let me write that. Right. Suppose, this is continuous. Suppose, This, this is certainly linear. So, linearity comes from the inner product and also of the operator A. Suppose, this mapping is continuous. Okay. Then, by Hahn Banach theorem, so this is only defined on D A, then by Hahn Banach uh, extend this to whole of H as a continuous. Okay. And then by re representation theorem, because now we are in Hilbert space, uh, by re representation theorem, uh, so that is given by an element in H itself. Okay. There exists Z in H such that 
uh, a x y that is the mapping ok is equal to x z for all x in T because we do not know what the extension is, but uh, uh, on d a the function is given by this inner product a x y ok. And again Han Banach theorem does not guarantee uh, a unique extension. So, there could be many extensions and for different extensions we may get different z ok. <coughs> uh, if so here the importance of the density if d a is dense in h. So, this is the region we all the time consider uh, <coughs> d a is dense in h z is unique. this is important ok. And that z we write this as a star uh, y ok. So, thus we have defined ok. So, definition now a star is the adjoint of ok. So, we have this a star is only it comes through this ok. Uh, x a star y ok. So, for all x in d a and y is in d a star. So, d a star also we have now uh, uh, y in d a star and the domain of a star precisely consists of uh, such y ok for which this mapping is continuous. So, so y this d a y in d a star whenever this mapping x going to a x y x belongs to d a is continuous so we'll continue this discussion in the next class thank you